The road to Scottish Summit starts here. This is the Power Platform Podcast. Join Rex de Koning, Anna Inez Urrutia de Sousa and Paddy Byrne as they talk to the Microsoft community about their stories. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Power Platform Podcast, hosted uh, and sponsored by Proximo3. Um, my name is Rex de Koning, one of the co-hosts. With me are... Hi, Anna. Uh, I'm also one of the co-hosts, and that's it for me. Yeah, my name is Paddy Byrne. I'm co-host of the Power Platform Podcast, uh, Microsoft MVP. And we've got a wonderful guest here today. Hi, we're back here. Um, sure, I've been in the Dynamics and Power Platform space for 20 years now and just had my renewal for MVP for year number 16. Um, so I really enjoy being part of this professional community and it's really great to see how much it's grown in the last 20 years. It's very good to have you, honestly. Thank you so much for making some time despite the time difference and all of that. So- Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah, you're used to, but you know, still, mm -hmm. thank you so much for that. Um, so, I did some investigation about like to prepare this icebreaker and I thought that it would be very interesting to share with the people that are listening and the people who doesn't know you. What has been the strangest thing that came to your garden that you have recorded on camera? <laughs> so I live in rural Colorado in a little town with not even a traffic light. I'm on a dirt road on the side of a mountain, and we've had bears, we've had so many deer I can't even count. We have a brand new baby deer who still has her spots that she likes to show up on camera. We have <laughs> a camera that's under our shed, so we see who wants to crawl under there. So we have skunks, foxes, uh, raccoons, you name it, anything that can fit under the shed. Um, but the strangest thing was the coyote who stole a neighbor's dog toy and was playing with it and tweaking it in front of the camera and just rolling around and playing like a dog with this silly dog toy. <laughs> I remember. I think you put you posted that, right? Yep. yep I'll make I sure remember it. That I'll link so to the video with, with you guys and, and share it. But yeah, this coyote just throwing the toy around and just hiding the time of her life. <laughs> and how, how do you deal with all those animals? Do you, do you just let them play until they leave themselves? Or do you have any <laughs> methods to get rid of them? <laughs> well, so I have three dogs. I have two little snack-sized dogs and a full-size German Shepherd. So the little dogs never go outside by themselves. The German Shepherd is never really outside by herself. But we make sure that we check cameras before we go outside, especially at night. And my German Shepherd's twice the size of the average coyote, so I'm not too worried there. The other animals want nothing to do with us. So um, we have a bear-proof trash can, so the bears can't get into our trash when we leave it out. Um, you just get used to it. We have bear spray that we keep at the door where the dogs go out. We, yeah, you just get used to it. I can't imagine. That sounds like... Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask the same. <laughs> so it's high-powered pepper spray. So it's super okay. concentrated, and it will shoot about 10 meters. Okay. So if the bear gets that close, then you can hopefully buy yourself about 10 seconds to scoop up the dogs and run in the house. <laughs> I thought the bear spray would be something you put down to prevent the bears coming coming near your house, not to well, not yeah, to it's, ah, it's, get away. <laughs> no, it's the, if you're encountered with a bear, you spray this, and hopefully you get yourself enough time to get out of the situation. Oh my god! So it made me think of a, an interesting fact. Um, just to talk about bear sprays and things like that, and I have a. A friend who has got he's got property over in Florida, so he goes over there quite a lot, and it's quite an enclosed compound. And there's a lot of alligators, so when you're walking home from the pub, you need to watch out for, for mm -hmm. the alligators. And um, apparently, I don't know if he told me this, that um, if an alligator, alligators are really fast, 
So if you see one, they come towards you, you're, you're not going to outrun it. But what you have to do is to run sideways because they can't turn like that. Yes. Because <laughs> they can run really fast forward, but they can't. <laughs> they have to turn and then run. Yes, that works for hippos also. When I was in far in Africa, that was one of the, the tips they gave you is if you find yourself being chased by a hippo, all you have to do is turn. <laughs> okay, well. It's a good thing to know. Yes. Yes. And it's something that you would remember if such a thing is, is coming after you. But <laughs> I couldn't imagine a situation where I would find myself being chased by a hippo. But at least I ever, if I ever do, I have an answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have another question for you. So you've been in the like in the not the business to speak about the community as a business, but you know you've been in the like in this environment for quite some time. What is the like the most exciting thing that you have seen uh, evolving or moving forward in the last couple of years that you want to share with us? Um, for me, the most exciting thing is that we finally got XRM as a SKU and we call it Dataverse. We've yeah. been doing <laughs> Dataverse for decades. And it wasn't until recently that somebody could actually go and buy it and do something with it. It used to take a lot of effort for us to hack out all of the dynamic stuff to have an XRM platform available. And in terms of, in terms of like people joining the community, what do you like, like the evolution of the community? Or um, maybe you don't like it. <laughs> I do That's like fine. it. I like, I like how we have built a culture where everyone is welcome and everyone has a place. Anyone who wants to join and put forth the effort can succeed in this professional world that we're in. Yeah, and I've seen you uh, in the last, I think, events, um, you know, speaking about this inclusion and, and bringing new people. And I think you were in the Ignite or was, yeah, Ignite. Uh, and you were making sure that the people that just recently joined are, you know, con connected and mm -hmm. having a good time. So. Yeah, that's really appreciated in the community. So thank you for that. Sure. So we're going to move on to what your day. To, we're going to move on to what your day-to-day -day role involves. But first, um, again, I was looking up your MVP profile now to see how many years it was. Sixteen years of MVP because I started my career like fifteen years ago, and you know, I think you were one of the first. That's the first thing I heard of MVP at the time. And uh, I want to say thanks, well, because I think you taught me dynamic CRM. Because oh, nice. at the, t at the <laughs> time, because at the time um, there was some books around. There was like you know the CRM Bible and field guide step by step, but there was never really any. There was a lack of content, wasn't there? It was a lack of, well, I find at the time I was, it was two thousand nine. I started. There seems to be a lack of video content, and then my work signed me up to some like pl learning platform, and it was. You and David, who were doing the, the videos, and I just thought, like, fantastic. There's actual guides on this, and even right, even like right throughout my whole career, it's always been your name that comes up in the videos. And sometimes even in Microsoft Learn now, I'll be done Learn, and I'll go, that, that's Julie Yax. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you pretty much taught me, particularly in the, the to, to start with, I started my career in um, CRM. So just just a big thank you for that, and I, I imagine you've taught many of the people as well um, because like I said you you were one of the first people I've seen doing tutorial videos and, and video content like uh, digital media content and on the product um so so now that I've got my, my thank yous out of the way because I'm, I'm sitting here quite blushing quite embarrassed because I'm, I'm with Julie Yak who taught me CRM <laughs> dynamic CRM um <laughs> so what do you do in your in your day-to-day -day role professionally and uh, in the community um Day to day is never the same. Um, a lot of writing these days, which I don't like as much. I prefer the being in a classroom in front of people and watching in their eyes as it makes sense to them. And that's where I get much more of my satisfaction. But doing a lot of curriculum design, trying to figure out what is the best path for that absolute beginner for that person who last week was a farmer and this week wants to do tech. How do we make that connection for them? Um, from a, I don't get paid to do this kind of stuff. I've been working a lot on um, training cohorts for 
displaced and vulnerable Ukrainians. I've been working with Vlad, um, a fellow MVP, and some of his team. And we've taken the English language program that Microsoft had me make and translated it to Ukrainian. And I built the software to translate their assignments. So their assignments come in in Ukrainian or Russian sometimes, and I see them in English. And then I respond to their assignments in English, and then it translates it on the way out and sends them an email translated into their own language. And it's very so, cool. Yeah, it's really awesome. And I did that with no code. So I don't know if you know this about me, but I don't write code. I have no interest in writing code. There are people for that. It's not me. But I was able to make this with Power Platform, make the, the flows and the Power Apps and all of those moving parts without having to use any code. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's very good. And I think that, yeah, getting close to communities that need this support, it's really important. So yes. I was not aware of that. I was not aware it's such a great thing to do. Yes, the cohorts last about six weeks and every eight weeks we start a new one and we have about 200 people or so join every cohort. That's great, that's great. That's a lot of people as well. But again, like I said, you, you know, so I need top me see, I mean, yes. but you, you continued that and you're, you know, if you're doing 200 people per se, a, a six week cohort, that's, yeah. that's fantastic. It's a lot of people learning power platform dataverse. Yes. Yeah. Well, and the day to day aspects of it is run by Ukrainian speaking professionals from Vlad's team. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more on the back end of most of it. And then I evaluate their weekly assignments. So their weekly assignments are, okay, so I'm going to tell you a secret. Everyone who applies gets accepted, and everyone who does the work and shows up passes. So it's not a high bar. You just have to show up and do some work. Show that you're there. But um, So this week's assignment was about digital transformation. So the students answer a question, what is digital transformation? why might an organization be resistant to digital transformation and how could you overcome that? So um, that's just one of their reading assignments they have. So they give me their answers and I just respond and give them feedback to that. So each response takes me five or 10 minutes per student. And I have a few other MVPs who have volunteered to help. So if any of you who are on this call want to help great assignments, let me know, I can hook you up and let you help out with that. But it's just our job is to be encouraging and to let these new to our industry folks know they can do the work too, that they've got it. It's not a difficult bar to, to hop over to get in this industry, that your business experience that you had before this comes with you and helps make yeah. you a better resource. I think it's very cool that you just mentioned about this assignment on digital transformation because some people I think that might be scared to jump into something like a training program like this, thinking that, you know, code is needed or programming background is needed. But I think it's more the approach that we have within the Microsoft environment, right? And how we, uh, yeah, how, how we, yeah, approach this the situations, these topics in organizations, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, normally we would ask uh, how your previous experiences with uh, with the Scottish Summit were, uh, but you haven't been involved in the Scottish Summit yet. Correct. Uh, so what are you going to do this Scottish Summit? Um, so I have a workshop that I'm delivering prior to the summit, and I have decided that when I go to conferences, the most important thing for me to do is listen to the questions from the audience. So it doesn't matter what session I'm in, but if I hear the questions, then that helps me identify where the gaps are in the training, in the ecosystem as a whole. And that helps me with planning for my training content as well as when I contribute to Microsoft or other clients that we might have to help make sure that they have the best well-rounded uh, training curriculum available. Well, that, that's that's a, uh, how do you call it? 
uh, a view that I haven't heard yet, to be honest. <laughs> Most of people, of course, go for the sessions and, 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 the, and the networking, but not really on, on this level to see where gaps are in, in, in knowledge or in, in different products of what, what the problems are that people have. Yes. So that's an interesting take on that. Yes. And for my workshop, it caters to the literal absolute beginner. It's called my first day of power platform. I wanted to call it, help me, I have no idea what I'm doing. But that sometimes people don't self-identify that that's what they should be doing. So my first day of Power Platform, where we'll talk about the different moving parts of Power Platform, but more importantly, give you an approachable path to getting your hands on and making that first Power App. Understanding what is a data model so that we put it in your words, your vocabulary, so that you can understand and find your place. Because just because I think in my head like a relational database doesn't mean everybody does. So maybe we can find that they really like that automation. They really think in PowerFX, that that language or quasi language really resonates with them. So hopefully in that first day of Power Platform, we give you enough exposure to the different moving parts that something goes, that's for me. And then we'll help you spend some time looking at the conference schedule and where should you be spending your time? What speakers might resonate with what you're looking to learn? That is very cool because it's like, a, not a roadmap, but you know, a map actually of, okay, if you like Power Automate, you should attend the sessions, right? Yeah. So, and follow these people. I haven't seen that before. It's very cool. And, and for the people who want to know which sessions and workshops there are, uh, here we have a link to the agenda yeah. so that everyone can see uh, when when the sessions are and which they are about. And if you want to go to Julie's workshop, uh, you can get your ticket uh, on this URL, scottysummer.com slash tickets. Sorry, yeah. an uh, intervention. Just for the audio listeners, the, the other URL for the agenda is www.scottysummit.com slash agenda. If you're just listening in the car, um, go and check out the agenda and then go and get a ticket for Julie's workshop. Um, I think that, that that's, uh, Alan, Anna touched on that as well. That takeaway that you're giving people to come to your workshop to say these are the people to go or these are the sessions to go to is going to be really valuable for someone who's not been to an event like this before. Um, because it can be overwhelming going to these events, even if you do know what sessions you're interested in, but to be brand new to technology or power platform, Microsoft business applications, um, to have that, that guidance and how, how you know, be shown how to get most value out of your day at Scottish Summit is an incredible, yep. incredible takeaway. Well, it's easy to get lost. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's really easy to decide that it's overwhelming and I'd rather just expect what's comfortable for me. And I want to make sure that people don't have to do that, that they can, I can say, you know what, the person you really need to spend time talking with is Anna. I know that she's had similar experiences. I know that she can help you. Um, I know that when I'm at an event, I spend a lot of time getting to know people kind of personally and their stories. And that helps me, first of all, be a better friend to those people. But also I catalog that. And I know that if you happen to really enjoy fly fishing in your free time and I meet someone who really enjoys fly fishing but feels lost in technology, you can still bond over something and then find your path through the technology. So there's going to be a connection somewhere. We'll just find it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's great. That's great. Um, in terms of, okay, you you told us already what you're going to do um, in this next event that's happening in October. We're really looking forward to see you uh, again. And I might pop up in your workshop if you don't mind. Come say hello and see the new faces we can include in our community. Um, in terms of, yeah, the next edition of Scottish Summit, uh, what are you most looking forward to and what are like, what do you want to bring back home with you without stealing anything, but, you know, bring back to you, to <laughs> home with you? Um, always the memories for me. And um, 
to to I feed off the community, so it will fill my bucket so that I will make it into the next community event. But I want to I don't know, I want to be there to to help. So I will be looking for opportunities to if you know people need help finding a room, I'll help them find a room. If there is an inexperienced speaker, I might put myself in the back of the room. So if there's questions they don't know how to answer, that there's a friendly face in the back of the room that can help. That kind of thing. That's very good. I, I, yeah, I think that when I started, I did my first session and I had Malin in the first row and it was like so good for me because she was my mentor and, you know, the person I was looking after, I was looking to learn from. And that made like such a difference in my first presentation. I was so nervous, but it makes a lot of, you know, it ha makes you feel good that someone is backing you up. Um, so that's a great move. I've also been told that it can be scary if I'm in the room. <laughs> don't necessarily know me and know that I'm not scary. But those people who 15 years ago, I was one who taught them, but they haven't really gotten to know me. They think I'm scary, but I'm not scary. I'm really friendly. Yeah, I know you're not scary at all. <laughs> Unless you caught the bear spray. <laughs> but yeah, then when you caught with the bear spray, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't think I could bring that on the plane, so you're okay. <laughs> I don't think you can. Probably not. <laughs> Have we any more questions for Julie? Um, no. Uh, well, no. Brad, you, you can tell us uh, uh, something where we can find you on, uh, on on different socials, for example. So my blog is julieyak.com. It's really hard to find. And then <laughs> um, easy to find on LinkedIn. Happy to share that as well. And on Twitter, I am Colorado Jules. So I guess I could never leave Colorado because then <laughs> no. I can figure out how to change that. Absolutely but no. Uh, my training site is 365.training, and we've got a great cool feature called My Digest, mydigest.365.training, and that's where we have an aggregate of nearly 200 different sources of blogs and Twitter feeds and YouTube channels, all about Power Platform and Dynamics and the adjacent technologies that you can Go and review it for with you know no obligation, no email, and not, not not necessary. Or create yourself a login and cater your topics. You can curate your own feed based on your interests, as well as sign up for an email digest based on your interests. Um, but we provide that for free, where you can go in and just because you don't know what you don't know. So if you go into my digest and have a look around, you'll see. Oh wow! I you know I never knew about Lisa Crosby's YouTube channel, which you have to be under a rock to not know about Lisa Crosby. <laughs> but for example, if you didn't know about Lisa Crosby's YouTube channel and you go to My Digest and you find her, suddenly you've got this great new resource. You can go and subscribe to her channel and learn more about what it is you're interested in. That's very good. Look, like a, bringing everything together and providing it to the community. Yes. Can you imagine being new in our industry and not knowing yeah. where to go to find stuff? It's terrible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening. Um, be sure to check out Julie's blogs and workshop. Um, so, as we said, uh, the to get tickets for Scottish Summit 2024, it's www.scottishsummit.com slash tickets. Rex has got it down the bottom of the screen for viewers. Uh, use the hashtag, please, social media, advertise Julie's workshop. Advertise Scottish Summit, blast social media with the hashtag, hashtag Scottish Summit 2024. Um, and you got it right. Follow. I got it right, <laughs> yes. And uh, follow at Scottish Summit um, because there's loads of announcements coming out. I've noticed that the last few days we're announcing all the speakers, all the workshops, yeah. the sponsors, um, the best place to find information, LinkedIn or Twitter, and it's, it's at Scottish Summit and it's at Scottish Summit. So... Thanks for listening. We'll yeah, and re regarding the tickets, don't forget we also have tickets uh, available on, on this webpage uh, for the pub quiz. That's on Saturday evening together with the uh, community awards. 
and of course the cabaret show on, on Friday evening. And you can get all the tickets for the different workshops. So have a look over there and hope to see you in October. Thank see you, Julie, so much. Yes, thank you so much for having me. The Road to Scottish Summit starts here. This is the Power Platform Podcast. Join Rex de Koning, Ana Inés Urrutia de Sousa and Paddy Byrne as they talk to the Microsoft community about their stories.